Well, so you, it's funny you mentioned that because I, I teach it an HR compliance program at my law school for HR mm-hmm. professionals. It's yeah. done through distance. It's asynchronous. And the first example, like it's a big story of this company and you have to find all of the issues that are in the company and then rank them one to three, like, what are you going to do? And the company has a kegerator. And so every Thursday at four o'clock, everybody gets around, has a beer and talks about, you know, what's going on in the organization. Mm-hmm. Like half the time, the HR people are like, you got to get rid of that kegerator because, oh, that's going to be a problem. And my response to that is that was the biggest red herring for you. Because imagine being the first HR person that goes into that organization and gets rid of the thing that creates social relationships within the organization Mm -hmm. that allows them to relax together to be Mm -hmm. a team. And if that's the first thing you're going to go in and get rid of, you're Mm -hmm. a bad HR person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't see the people part of it. And you hired adults. If somebody gets too drunk, you call them an Uber or a Lyft or a right. taxi or give them a ride home. And then you say, dude, you can't do that anymore. Like, this is a disciplinary thing at uh-huh. that point. You can't do that anymore. Like, yeah. BFD, you don't get rid of the thing that has ingrained itself in how right. they do business. Um, and for a human resources professional, the same is true for when you're dealing with people who don't look like you. hmm they don't have to think the way you do. You have to come from a place of respect. And that Mm -hmm. means flexibility around how we operate and how we work together. So. Yeah. That neurodiversity is, I think people are tapping a little more into that here lately. Um, and God willing. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping, cause I mean, I'm hearing more about it. I'm, I'm listening to a lot more, uh, about it on, uh, with professors and, and other HR professionals, I'm, I'm hearing more about it. And it's, it's really good to see that people are settling into neurodiversity because that right there, um, that's such a, uh, it's one of the biggest conflicts that even I've had with people and myself is because I, I will not, I have failed too often to not to put the other person's perspective. And I'm like, well, my way is the right way. So it's had to really, (laughs) with my, with my ego. Well, well, and it's, it, it, and it goes back to that point of, you know, being willing to see people where they are and respect mm-hmm. them for that. So. Why is that such a scary thing for a human resources professional to do in the workplace where it's like, see people for who are, who they are, where they are. That means even in their struggles, if they're bringing them to work. It's almost as if, and I heard so so often, somebody might say, well, leave your personal life at home and bring your work life to work. And it's just like, but now we're confused in this whole thing, work-life balance, work-life integration. Uh, at what time, at what point does it become too personal? What's the spectrum HR people? And at what point do you, can you not... Um, can you have to be able to say, I can't worry about it all? You know, where, where are the right balances, would you say, for our I'm colleagues? Listening? Bradley, you are in my living room right now. I know. <laughs> like, we have been in each other's living room, in our bedrooms, in our kitchens, in our garages, in our, I did an interview with someone who was in their closet, mm-hmm. like literally in the closet, like not the metaphorical closet, but the literal closet. Like the line is no, it is either a dotted line Mm -hmm. by choice of the employee or it's non-existent. Um, And for employers, the best advice I give them, not saying it's the best advice that it's my advice that is so Mm -hmm. great, but the thing I want them to know is that you get to draw a line of what is respectful behavior. Mm-hmm. And whatever comes into that, into your line, you get mm-hmm. to say, this is what is respect. My mm-hmm. hope for you is that that line includes people with different hair textures. It includes people who are <clears throat> punk rockers who mm-hmm. might have black eyeliner on in, in, you know, messy ways, but you don't have to accept the nudist in your office, right? The punk rocker who's bringing their amp to the office. Nope. You don't have to accept that either. 
but you have to have a, a line that says, this is what our definition of respect is. Right. It may be mm-hmm. the golden rule. It may be the platinum rule of treat others how they want to be treated, but it has to be something where you say, we want you to be here. We care about you. If your mom is sick, tell me, cause I have tools mm-hmm. that I can help you with if your mom is sick. If you are wanting to have a baby and you're, you know, suffering from infertility issues, Mm -hmm. I want, if you want to tell me, I want to hear about it because there might be things I could help you with and making it okay for people to tell you about their life situations Mm -hmm. means that you have an opportunity to address them. Mm -hmm. We have EAPs for a reason. We have health insurance for a reason. We Mm -hmm. offer PTO and FMLA and all of those other quote unquote benefits for a reason. Mm -hmm. And you might not know about them, but if you tell me, if you feel like we have a relationship where you can share the intimate parts of your life, I might have tools to help you. So Mm -hmm. it's defining that zone of respect and then Mm -hmm. being open to hear the bad stuff that's happening in their life, yeah. the good stuff that's happening in their life, celebrate when they have a baby, right. the, you know, celebrate the new wedding, the new car, mm-hmm. like the, the great things about their life. Those pieces are so important to creating a space where people mm-hmm. feel like they belong. Mm-hmm.